بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم احمده وصلي على رسول الكريم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي يا رب اوكي سو توداي اي وونت تو توك اباوت سمثينغ امبورتنت دو يو نو ذات افتر ذا سيكند فول اوف ذا تيمبل ان 70 اي دي افتر ذا هيبرو ذا لانجويج ذا هيبرو لانجويج هاد بيكوم بيسيكلي uh like a dead language because the jews had left jerusalem and now they were scattered all over the world and they had to learn to speak the language of the cultures that they were going to and that meant that uh if they knew hebrew it was only for religious reasons and that was it and uh if anyone back then was to predict the future of the uh hebrew language they would have said oh it's going to be a dead language especially with the coming of secularism and so on and so forth the jews like for example in europe they were speaking yiddish the jews in the muslim world they were speaking arabic they only spoke hebrew for religious functions and even that you know like we read fatiha without knowing what it means or we read quran without knowing it what it means so it become essentially like a dead language but then lo and behold what happens let me share with you so the revival of the hebrew language the revival of the hebrew language took place in europe and palestine toward the end of the 19th century into the 20th century through which the language's usage changed from the language of judaism to a spoken and written language used for daily life in israel so today that language that was a dead language that was only used for ceremonial purposes uh is now a living and breathing language amongst the jewish people of israel and uh what is the situation with the muslims in the arabic language uh we have had uh, and i want to talk about what happened with the arabic language in the contemporary times because you see every civilization has a main language and if you lose that language you lose the purpose and the goals and the essence of that uh civilization the the thing that unites the entire ummah is the arabic language okay and so if there's going to be a revival of the ummah it has to be based upon the revival of the arabic language and let me also share with you when the mahdi whether he will be arab or non arab it doesn't matter because the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam show what will happen uh with the mahdi let me show you okay when the mahdi uh, after some time fa idha ra'a an-nas when the people see dhalika that he's you know that he's being helped by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the army being uh you know falling into a a, a sinkhole in the desert فَإِذَا رَأَى النَّاسُ ذَلِكَ أَتَاهُ أَبْدَالُ الشَّامِ So the servants of Allah from Sham will come to him. What do the people of Sham speak? Arabic. وَأَصَابُوا أَهْلُ الْإِرَاقِ And even a small groups from Iraq will come to him. What do the language they speak? Most lang- likely the language that the Ummah will be speaking at that time. This طَائِفَةً مَنْصُورًا will be speaking at, ta- at that time. most likely will be the arabic language okay so uh and so therefore there is go- there is a relationship between the revival of the arabic language and the revival of the umma and those people that hope that their them or their children or their uh, students they will one day would be with the mahdi then they have to focus and concentrate on the uh the air the revival of the arabic language so because this is a concern the revival of the arabic language this is the key to all of the islamic sciences this is the key to all of the islamic sciences the arabic language you open the door to arabic you open the door to the islamic sciences yes for the last 400 years prior to the last uh 100 years uh most of the important islamic books were written in the farsi language but for the fundamentals and for the asuls the arabic language is extremely important 
Now, uh, let me then uh, share with you another aspect of this. So what did uh, the person, Bin Yehuda is his name, what did Bin Yehuda do to help this process of revival? Uh, so Bin Yehuda, who was uh, born in a Yiddish-speaking family in 1858, okay, and he wanted to revive the Hebrew language back then, okay. So if some of the scholars have been talking about the revival of the Arabic language for the last 50 years, they have been trying to do this for the last 100 years. So we're already 100 years or 50 years behind, okay. So what are the steps he took? The first step he took is speaking Hebrew in the family. Actually, when I was studying his life, uh, before that he takes a step, and that is that all uh, the primary and secondary school has to be in Arab, uh, Hebrew. That's what he wanted. So we would say, do it in Arabic. The number two, make it a living language. And uh, so you start speaking uh, Arabic with your family members. And so therefore, I'm thinking the next uh, Arabic class I have, uh, it will be, and then we need to create, looking at what he did, experts in the Arabic language, experts in Arabic poetry, experts in Arabic language, because that is the key. That is the key. And you know how Egyptians speak a different Arabic. Yemenis, they speak a different Arabic. People in Iraq, they speak a different Arabic because of the you can say, quote unquote, conspiracies done against them. Okay. People don't like that word, but whether it was a conspiracy or not, here we are. An Egyptian Muslim has a hard time understanding a Yemeni Muslim, who has a hard time understanding a Sudanese Muslim, even though they all speak Arabic. So there's a need for revival of classical Arabic. The Mahdi will communicate with people in the Arabic language. Okay. He will communicate with the people in the Arabic language. And uh, the people with him, they will speak Arabic. They will be from Syria. They will be from Iraq. Maybe uh, that might not turn out to be that way. But this is definitely linked that the Mahdi will speak Arabic. Because why? Because the language is linked to the only thing that connects all the Muslims that from all over the world will come. Okay. So before... The Malhama starts before the bad days really start. We're in this time period right now. You have a year, six months, whatever. Hit the books and learn the Arabic language. And I'm thinking in this last class that I had, I think I did a good job in the Tafsir of Sutul Kahaf, generally speaking. I think we did a pretty okay job with the vocabulary. I could have definitely done better with the grammar. But in this next class, I'm going to divide all my, er my uh, classes of Arabic into four parts. So there's going to be the tafsir part, there's going to be the uh, Arabic uh, vocab part, and then the grammar part, and then spoken Arabic part, so that you, you can actually speak with your friends, and so that family members can start speaking one, with one another, make it a more familiar language, and then so that the jama, the ideal jama, is the jama that's talking to each other in classical Quranic Arabic language. That's the ideal Jama'ah. I don't know if we'll ever get there. You know, even if we'll have, you know, right now it's hard for me to even phantom one Jama'ah that in that comes together of 10 people or more where they're all speaking classical Arabic language, right? Uh, but that's the ideal. That's the goal. It can be done if you're motivated. It can be done if you are really committed. It can be done if you dedicate yourself to Allah. You can spend six months to a year learning the Arabic language. And like I said, next time, inshallah, if I do a class, uh, I'm going to definitely include, even for the next class that I'm going to do for the people that took the previous class, I'm going to do Sutul Baqarah. So there will be the tafsir, the vocab, the grammar, and then the spoken Arabic. And so the spoken Arabic, and then the first class, the, the new class I'm going to start will be Sutul Kahaf, the same one I just previously did, with inshallah some improvements. Sutul Kahaf, with what? Uh, with vocab, and then with uh, grammar, and then speaking Arabic. And I think I'll do three classes this time. I'll do Sutul Kahaf for the beginners, Sutul Bakra for the people who already do Sutul Kahaf, and then a class on Ruqya, on 
you know, studying uh, the art of Ruqya, because this is one of the most needed things right now. Uh, and so I'll talk, be talking more about that, inshallah, the classes also. But I'm just preparing the minds of the people so they can make their minds up. I think I'm going to charge uh, anywhere $20 per person for the people that can afford it. For the people that can't afford it, then uh, I'll ask for people to sponsor people that can't afford it. Allahu A'lam. But I'd like to do this. The revival of the Arabic language is in need. Now, let me mention something else, which is more important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Nazzala ala qalbika. We sent down, O oh, Prophet, this Quran on your heart. So the heart of the Quran, Prophet is the Quran. It's the heart of the Prophet. This is why when Aisha radiallahu anha was asked about the character of the Prophet, she said, did you not read the Quran? That's his heart. That is his heart. His heart is the Quran. And so it is fard, fard, fard upon anyone who has the ability to learn the Arabic language that he learned the Arabic language. It's fard. If you have done a master's, a PhD, you've done your bachelor's, you've done your high school, and you haven't done anything in terms of you're just praying and you don't know what you're saying, it's still good, alhamdulillah, that you're praying. But it'll be so much more effective if you know what you're saying. Okay? So, uh, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ar-Rahman mu'allam al-Quran. Ar-Rahman, he taught Quran. So the manifestation of Allah's mercy, the biggest rahmah of his is to teach Quran. And who's teaching Quran is Rahmatul Lil Alameen, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So I encourage all of you to make a firm commitment to be part of this revival that, uh, in my opinion, starts with, you know, the likes of Dr. Sir Ahmed. In the case of Arabic language, Farad Hashmi, uh, she did a fabulous job with the women. And, uh, of course, Sheikh Imran Hussain has made certain parts of the Arabic language more clear of how to approach the language from a, 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 a perspective of study and academics. Um, so it's very, very important that you study the Arabic language. It is the key to opening your heart to the heart of the Prophet, number one. It is the key that there's no barrier between you and Allah. You're reading Quran every day, every day, and it's as if Allah is talking to you and you're having a direct experience with that beautiful music that you listen to and that beautiful beautiful music is itself enough. But if you're understanding that beautiful music uh, and maybe some people might mind my using the word music. Melody maybe is a better term. So the melody that you hear from the Quran, the rhythms you hear from the Quran, the way they will take you on a journey sometimes to the sun and to the moon and to the trees and sometimes to the story of Yusuf and story of Lut and to the story of the Nuh right? So to the stories of the different prophets, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open up this world, this journey for you. Every time you dive into the Quran, you're taken to a different place. Sometimes you have a question in your mind and you're swimming in Quran, you're listening in Quran, you understand it. Allah opens the doors for your understanding, answers your questions for you. And it's so amazing that that does happen with Quran. So often you have a question and you're like, okay, Allah, I really want the answer to this. I want the truth for this. I want to understand this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens the doors. Okay. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, in this time period where we're stuck at home and as we come to an end of maybe this period, it's a good idea to commit yourself to the Arabic language, inshallah. I'll be putting out more information. So stay tuned, inshallah. But the other point I wanted to make was what? The Mahdi and uh, the revival of Islam and the Ummah is connected to the revival of the Arabic language. Okay. The more the Ummah loves the Arabic language, what? The more the Ummah loves the Arabic language, appreciates the Arabic language, the more we will have a revival. So I will end here. ولسان المسلمين والمسلمات السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته